if you look at the kind of traditional model, especially around boutiques, right? The utilization is such a huge part of that. And it's paying that kind of premium price to come to SoulCycle for that, you know, lights low, the music, the experience with the instructor. And there are the rents and the overhead, the instructors yeah. themselves, the number of bikes in a room. As the industry shifts, do you have a sense for whether or not or how that pricing model shifts or even the footprint of studio shift? Have we gotten to that point yet or it's it's not clear? So look, we're very clear on the economics of the business. I mean, I'm certainly very clear on the economics of the sole business. I know precisely how many riders I need walking into a door and clipping in to make sense of, of what is essentially real estate, like you know our, our brick and mortar business. Certainly when we look at the trend and trajectory of riders coming back into the studios, it gives me no pause or no cause for concern in terms of is the brick and mortar business model broken? It's not. What our business is, is dependent upon people walking through the door. We do not have an all-you-can-eat model. Interestingly, what I've seen in the industry over, and I'm sure this predates my time here, but it seems that more and more boutique fitness providers are kind of getting into the membership model. And I am seeing more and more kind of all-you-can-eat business models emerging. And indeed, SoulCycle launched its own Soul Renew, which is a recurring um essentially a, a payment plan. So you can you know, buy any four, eight, 12, 16 classes a month. And of course, we incentivize you to do so. I think that's a really interesting business model because that gives you predictable and recurring revenue. It doesn't necessarily increase your revenue. What we have found is it does increase rider engagement. So when people sign up for those things, and we're seeing quite a significant number of our riders signing up, that it's encouraging them to ride more frequently than they did prior. So it doesn't necessarily drive ridership, but it does drive engagement. And of course, it delivers predictable revenue and that's quite nice. 